talk to you about breathing on the rower and how that can help affect your back pain and sciatica or some of that hip pain. So as we go through this, um, a little bit of background on, about me. This is my wife here and then my uh, two little boys there. Uh, we actually just had a little girl about a week ago. And so that's her. That's kind of how she feels about her brothers right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we kind of go through this, um, we are a small independent um, physical therapy clinic for those of you that don't know me. Um, so we are one-on-one. -on -one. It's not corporate. It's, uh, it's all about the relationship. So when you come in, I probably will have 10 people total throughout the day. So we're always going to maintain the less, ten, less than 10 rule. And that allows us to stay open. And we're, we're helping keep people out of the hospitals and whatnot. So we are medically essential so that they don't have to have unnecessary risk of exposure elsewhere. So um, but yeah, always one-on-one -on -one with the doctor, no tech, no aid. Um, and that's just something that you don't get at normal PT. It's, they're usually trying to treat 20 and 30 people a day per therapist. So as we do this, um, we are just going to have everybody stand up, uh, and then I'll come back. I'm going to stop sharing. And so as we come in, everybody stand up for me. We'll get you moving right away. And, uh, Let's just have you bend over and touch your toes. So if you can't touch your toes, how far can you go? And taking a look here, Andrew goes pretty good there. I can't see Karen and then Linda and Erica are on phone, so I don't see video. Um, but yeah, so if you have any pain with that, let's just make some notes here. Opposite of that, what's a back bend? So as you bend backwards, you can put your hands on your hips and just kind of bend back. Does that create any pain or irritation? And memorize how those feel because uh, we're going to go through a couple reasons why people get back pain and hip pain on the rower. And uh, we're going to come up with some drills. So the first thing that I want to do here is have you lay down on your back. So as you're laying down on your back, you can see I want a hand on your chest and a hand on your belly. And as you put a hand on your chest and a hand on your belly, I want you to take a deep breath in. And where does your hand move? Are you moving on your chest or are you moving in your belly? So again, hand on chest, hand on belly, take a really deep breath in and then blow it out. If you're moving through your chest, we would like to limit that upper chest breathing pattern and we'd like to show you how to breathe through your diaphragm. So as you take a deep breath in, your belly, your belly should come out into your, into your hand. Out, your belly should come in and you should feel your core muscles working. Think about it like this. If you have a balloon and you're gonna blow up a really big balloon, make a really big breath and blow out. And I want you to feel those tummy muscles tighten. So go hand on chest, hand on belly. Breathe into your belly and the belly comes out, blow out and belly comes in. So I want you to work on that um, as we talk about some of the other things here. So we're gonna talk about why certain people have certain back pain. Um, and what the cause is. But while I'm going through this, I want you to work on that diaphragmatic breath because when we start to connect our breath to our uh, core, then we're gonna be able to decrease that irritation and, and provide better stability in the back. And so you'll have less back pain on the rower. Um, all right, so again, big thing here, why do we have pain in the first place? Uh, it's important to note that you know, pain is there just to protect us from something dangerous, like this uh, hot stove. If you touch that hot stove there, you're going to move away from that quickly because you're going to have pain because your brain is telling you that that is dangerous. Well, sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes we'll get pain signals um, telling us that things are painful because they're sensitized and, and the movement actually isn't dangerous. So again, when you get a sunburn, and you scratch that sunburn, the scratch isn't really dangerous, but that hurts a lot. 
Well, that's because your skin is sensitized. And then as we go through this, we're gonna talk about different reasons why you could be sensitive and how to fix that so that you can have, the way you can be pain-free on the rower. So as you bend forward and bend backwards, that is the same thing for lean and swing on the rower. We should be leaning forward, reaching those shoulders out in front, and then swinging back and using our glutes and powering through that row stroke. So as you do this, if you lean forward and you're able to reproduce your pain as you are bending forward, or as you are bending backwards, you're able to reproduce your pain, well then that is a good thing because then we're gonna be able to make that reducible if it's reproducible. So here are the few most common ways or things that cause low back pain. Usually it's a, it's a herniated disc, and that disc um, pushes onto that nerve, and that irritates that in the lower back. So these are folks that have that pain when they're reaching forward, when they're leaning forward on that row stroke and overreaching or overarching in that back. It's a lot of times it's that disc that's getting irritated there. Uh, usually, you know, 40 years of age and, and less, but you know, it can happen all the way up into your 60s. Uh, but yeah, so if you're leaning forward, chances are it's probably a disc issue. Uh, most folk throughout their life will have some sort of disc issue, and that doesn't mean that that's the cause of the pain. So if you take a look, if we, if we took 100 people off the street, 100 people in the house, and we took an MRI of 100 people of them, 80% of those 50-year-olds are going to have some sort of disc degeneration, but not 80% are going to have low back pain. So just because your MRI or your x-ray shows that you've got some sort of disc issue doesn't mean that's exactly what's going on. And, and more and more the uh, medical association is starting to say that we should not be referring people to MRIs because they are not a valuable source of information. So the second thing, if it's not a disc, is it a joint? And so a lot of times what happens is we start to get a little bit older and the disc space in between the vertebra there starts to narrow and that starts to put pressure on that nerve. So when you, if you're getting your back pain as you lean back, that is going to put that compression on that nerve and that can irritate that. So we're gonna show you a few ways to minimize that pressure on there um, and decrease that irritation on that nerve. And again, when we talk about stenosis or arthritis, they're like wrinkles. Everybody has them, but not everybody has the same kind of pain. So again, it kind of comes down to that um, sensitivity and that irritation. So is it a disc? Is it stenosis? Well, one of those two things generally increases an irritation in the low back. And when you have that irritation, then the sciatic nerve here starts to get irritated and you start to get that referral pattern down the leg. So a lot of times it'll, it'll start in the bud, it'll refer down to the outside of the leg, maybe it'll even go into your calf. But just like a hose, a garden hose, if you start to lose pressure or lose water flow in your garden hose, how would you go fix that? Well, you'd go find the kink somewhere along the chain and unkink that. And that's exactly what happens with these sciatica piriformis syndrome type issues. It's usually not that. It's usually something above that is creating that kink and that we can address it up above and that will help us with better flow down. So there we go. Does anybody have pain on the rower? I've gotten pain sometimes on the rower. I have to. Uh, so if, it's, if it is on that reach, it's, it might be a disc. If it's on that extension, it might be that joint. And so let's go over a few different core activation drills. So this is, I wanna spend most of our time today just kind of showing you guys how to move. It's kind of like a you know, private PT session for you. And just talking about you know, our core treatment breakouts here. So um, the first one 
is just gonna be this activation drill. So we're just gonna have you lie down again. So as we go, I'm just gonna have you lie down and then let's just take our ribs down to our hips and then take our belly button down to our spine. And then for the females in the room, we're gonna do a Kegel exercise. For the males in the room, you're just gonna pull the boys up. And we're just going to, again, knit those ribs down, kind of like we're doing a uh, Pilates and they, they use that term, knit the ribs down. You're gonna take your ribs right here, your pelvic bone right here, and you're just gonna pull down with those ribs. You don't want those ribs to kind of flare out because you can see as my rib flares out, I create some extension right there in my low back. And so as we do this, we might even think, hey, smash your back flat on the floor. And you may have to rotate the pelvis back and keep your back flat. So that's kind of the core activation drill. So now let's try and use that. So lying on your back flat, bring one knee up. As you do that, Let's just do a little knee push. We're gonna push our knee into our hand, hand into our knee, and we're gonna keep our back flat. If that's good, you can do both sides. And this is my knee push. If you feel your back start to arch up or those ribs start to flare out, try and get the ribs down and back flat as you push your hands into your knees and your knees into your hand. How is that? Who has questions about that? Good? All right, so then that's knee pushes. So then the next maybe drill you might think about is a heel tap. So what we can do is we're up here and you're just gonna tap one heel down. Again, as you do this, you should be thinking about ribs down, belly down, Tap that heel down, come right back up, alternating sides. And then we'll, we'll bring this back full circle. So what we talked about earlier, as we were breathing our, into our belly, we were breathing um, di diaphragmatically. As you hold that knee push, let's go knee push. Hold knee push right now, just 30 seconds. So you're gonna be lying on your back. And then you're just gonna hold. 30 seconds. Now try and breathe into your belly as you do that. So you're learning a skill of how to stabilize your lower back and breathe at the same time. Because too often people will try and do squats and hold their breath, or they'll try and get on the rower and forget to brace their core. Or they'll go running and forget to brace their core, and that's where these types of back issues happen. So we're learning that skill of challenging your breathing and your bracing at the same time. And that's where we kind of come up with this, hey, breathe your back pain away. If you can really learn this skill, especially as you're going hard and you're, as you're breathing harder, uh, that's going to be a skill set that you'll never be good enough at and you're always trying to improve. It doesn't matter where you are in your rowing career. All right, so then the next thing that we'll look at, so those are, those are knee pushes and heel taps. So if those are going well, and you're looking for a little more progression, you can straighten your legs out, arms straight up, and then you can kind of bring one leg down and bring the other one back up. And these are called hollow holes. So, as we do this, let's just do one leg at a time. And you should be keeping your back flat. Too, too often people want to get into this B100 hold right here, and their back is arched. So make sure you're doing that. You're holding your back flat, your ribs are down. You're only going legs down and arms down as far as you can, while being able to maintain that back flat and those ribs down. Rest for a second. All right, go right back up into that hollow hold. Get your back flat. Go ahead and lower 
your arms and legs until you start to feel that stomach shake. That's low enough. Breathe into that. Keep your back flat. Keep those ribs down. So, deep breath in through the nose. Blow it out. As you blow out, you might think about tightening your core a little more, and you might feel your back get a little flatter. And so that's an important piece as you start to do a little bit more of this core activation. I think a lot of people get too busy in life. We're always running around to work and the gym, and we kind of neglect some of this kind of stuff. So if this quarantine has any kind of silver lining, it's going to allow you to maybe double down on some of the recovery and rehab and maybe take care of some of those nagging injuries that you've been putting off. So I would encourage you to kind of build this into your workouts before or after and just work on that breathing and bracing. So uh, if you have any questions about any of these core exercises, let me know. All right, so then the next one, as we're on the rower, I think it's important to kind of talk about that hip hinge. So as we're here and we're on a rower, we should be in this lean and, and getting that drive through our heels and pushing back. As we lean and then we swing back, the, the most powerful part of this is not the pushback with your legs, but it's the moment as you push back and then you start to lean back. So that's the lean forward and swing back right there. And that's because we're able to get this hip hinge. And so as we talk about hip hinges, The most powerful part is as we put our butt back and then we're using our glutes to squeeze, to push through the foot. If you'll stand up, what we'll do here is just take a little hip hinge. We'll go butt back and we'll squeeze back up. So we wanna squeeze those glutes. So the first thing you talk about is how do you squeeze the glutes? So if you, if you take your hip bones right here and you just squeeze your, boot, your glutes, those hip bones on the side right out here, they should rotate out to the side, just like that. So as you squeeze your butt, you should see your knees almost turn outward. Squeeze your glutes, rotate those femurs outward, and you're gonna get a little better glute activation. And so think about that. Uh, Shauna may say, hey, keep those knees out, don't let those knees dive in. What she's really saying is, engage your glutes. So now you've got that glute squeeze. Now try this. Go ahead, squeeze your glutes, and don't lose the squeeze. Hinge forward. And this is, this is your lean position. Our core's still engaged. We're not overly rounded, overly reaching. Our core's still engaged right here. And you're just gonna squeeze those glutes and stand back up. It's really hard to keep the glutes engaged as you start to lean forward. And that's, that's the moment, if you can't keep your glutes engaged as you hinge forward like that, you're not gonna be able to keep your glutes engaged on the rower, and then it becomes a really back intensive stressor, and that's going to irritate and create symptoms. Anybody have any questions on that? All right, so yes. go ahead. So hi, it's Shauna. Hi, Shauna. Hi, so when you go forward and you're talking about hinging um, more from your hips and you lose that engagement from your glutes, yes. does that then like where should you engage at that point? Should it be in your hamstrings as you come in? So as you, so one more time, Shauna, what's the, what's the question again? So as you come in on the return, uh -huh. yeah, so from there, so then you're driving back and you get 
the glute engagement here, yep. And then when you come in, then you're losing glute engagement here, is that right? Yeah, as you, as you come back, so say you're on the rower and you're coming back, you, you're, you're engaged those glutes. Right. And, and then you should still have some of that glute engagement coming back forward, even on your lean and your reach forward. And it's okay. an, so you're thinking like on a bicep, we're gonna contract that bicep up and then we can eccentrically lower that down. As we're leaning forward, we're gonna concentrically squeeze our glutes up and then we're gonna eccentrically reach forward. And that's why when you get like a kettlebell swing, that's why yeah. that's such a big glute activator because it's the deceleration and the eccentric part right here that's gonna load that glute. Okay. And that's where, when, that's where when folks don't have this, that they're gonna end up rounding through this lower because they're right. not using their glutes to kind of hinge and reach. Okay, so how do you, help me on how to cue that to help people <clears throat> not um, round their back as they come forward and be able to keep that engagement because I think that's hard for most people. Yeah, and I think, honestly, I think if you set up on the rower right to begin with, and I'm sure you probably say this, Shauna, but you don't want to be on the back side of your sits bones here. You want right. to be on that front side. Right. And reach forward. And then even right there, you can even think about maybe squeezing that butt and driving those knees out. And feel that in your glute as you reach forward. What I may do is have like have them hold. All right, I may have you hold the row right here, the bar, and then mm -hmm. Have them pull back, but don't move. You're holding it. And right. Feel that activation right there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a challenge to get them to get that end range because that's that's the hardest part is when you're leaning forward, you want to shut off your glutes. That's where they get that pinch in the hip as they come forward. Yeah. And that's also where then they start getting that low back stress because they're just not able to activate those glutes. Okay. Yeah, I think another thing, another thing that causes people to um, like turn their glutes off or stop using them when they're coming forward is, is they try to overreach um, and they try to bring their hands too far forward and maybe they're doing a good job hinging at the hip for a while and then they're trying to reach farther forward with their hands, so then they round the rest of the way. Um, so for some people, it might just be, try not to go too far forward with your hands, because maybe they just don't have that range of motion right now, but the more they practice it, they'll, uh, they'll gain that. Okay. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, is, it, is it, it's concept two rowers over there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a uh, that's a perk because some of like the water rowers have the feet a little bit higher, and then when you right. get too high, then it definitely creates more of a more of that rounding, overreaching. So if yeah. it's too high, I mean that might be a, a a cue there too. But with the concepts, they're it's a little bit lower, so they're yeah. better. Yes, I agree for sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so we talked about glute activation. We talked about hip hinging. Um, what other questions do we have about core activation, diaphragmatic breathing, knee pushes, heel taps, hollow holds? All of that makes sense. How are we doing on time? We're perfect. All right, so then uh, we can also talk about Say it is a, you're leaning forward and you're starting to get that maybe disc irritation and that's referring into the glute. The thing we want to start with for those treatments is extension-based movements. So as I pull this up here. Okay. So what we would do, if, if leaning forward bothers it, uh, when I pick up the little kiddo out of my out of the crib, I will sometimes get that irritation there. 
So I know when I'm flared up, that's when I'm gonna come over and I'm just gonna lay down and I'm gonna do some press ups and I'm gonna do some extensions. And I'm just gonna repeat that. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and keep my hips on the, on the mat. I'm just gonna try and press up. And what that does, like a water balloon, if you push on one end of the water balloon, it'll push the water to the back end. As I do this, I'm pushing my disc away from that nerve and I'm milking it back away. So you can do repeated movements. You can go up and down that way, or you can do a static hold. So if you have disc issues, that's one of the first things that we recommend. And then, um, so yeah. The next one would be uh, the stenosis stuff. And we'll just go through those real quick. We have here. So if, if your issue happens to be on that extension and you're coming back, one of the first things that you might think is, well, are you, over, are you leaning back too soon? Are you, uh, you have like an early kind of lean back? Are you getting a full extension? And at the very end, as you're leaning back, are you still bracing? Are you still using your core? Or now are you letting those hips shift forward and creating that tilt? So if you stand up, what we, what we will often see is if you're getting pain as you come back, people usually have a little bit of a tilt here and they're usually a little bit tight through their quads because they're not using their glutes and hamstrings as much. So the quads coming up and they'll, they'll already be in this. So on their setup, they're just coming back. So these are the folks that might get on the front. We, we talked earlier, Shauna, about how we want to sit on the front part of those sit, sit bones so that we can reach forward without that round. Well, these people may not, want to be at the top four. So that's why there's no, there's no one size fit all. These folk may need to be more in the middle or may even need to be a little further back because they're already at that predisposition to have that irritation when they come back. So that would be a cue that I might give. Um, so when you're in this, try it. Tilt all the way forward. Does that create irritation? Tilt all the way back. Does that create irritation? And as you do this forward and back type movement, that is going to allow you to see wh where do you feel most of your irritation. Because when you can start to figure out what reproduces the pain, then you can start to then go the opposite way and start to reduce the pain. So as we do this, you might think, let's see where my monitor is. So as we do this, one of, the, one of the biggest things that we'll do for folks in the clinic is if they are in this kind of like tilted forward position, we'll have them squeeze their glute in a kneeling position, and then we'll tilt back, squeeze your glute, and that should give you a, a stretch right down this front. And then with this opposite leg, we're just gonna come forward, lean forward. So again, squeeze your glute, tilt your pelvis back, step forward, lean forward and you're going to feel this stretch right out the front now if you don't have the if you don't have the glute squeeze and you don't have that pelvic tilt and you just let everything come forward i can go all day but that's not true because i'm a cyclist and i'm really tight so if i go here that's all the further i can go before i get that stretch so it's that little subtle detail of squeezing the glute and tilting that pelvis backwards that's gonna give you a better stretch. If you're one of those that has that TFL or IT band tightness, you can do this, and then you can reach that same kneeling arm up, and then you can lean to the side with that. So come up and then lean, lean to the side. Don't come forward as you lean, but stay straight to the side, and you'll feel a little better stretch through that TFL hip flexor area. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm definitely going to incorporate that in my stretches. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's because, again, I mean, these folks that have this, these are the same folks that want to lean forward on the shopping cart or 
they don't want to stand up straight. They want to lean forward because it takes the pressure off. Part of that is because they're already tilted forward and that creates that extension. So then anything that they can do in that rounded forward, they actually like the reach forward in the, in the lean and swing. Um, but th these are the folks that are going to do really well with the child's pose here, or they're going to do really well, like reversed, reverse child's pose, if you will, knees to chest, um, or even downward dog. So any, any kind of uh, flexion based moment. So again, it, it always depends on how do we reproduce their pain. Once we know what agitates them, then we can figure out what is going to um, be the best treatment option for them. And again, that's why we practice one-on-one -on -one like we do, because if you're treating two, three, four people at a time, you just can't pay attention to the little details. And then it does become a cookie cutter. Here's your sheet, go do that in the corner. Yeah, that's what I've had before is the cookie cutter. So I, this is so awesome. Um, all right, so, uh, so there's some joint irritation. Okay, so for those folks that, all right, they've already gotten the disc irritation or the joint irritation, and now they're starting to get a lot of that, like referral into the glutes, and that's starting to refer down the leg. Well, those are the folks that are gonna do really well with like piriformis stretches. You can do, you can do that lying down as well, coming up. And I think the mistake made as we do the piriformis stretch is we just stay strictly going forward. I think we should add a little bit of a rotation this way, coming forward, straight, diagonal, over. You can push knee down as you do that. You can bring knee up as you do that. So basically you're just trying to stretch that piriformis um, any way that you can. Love that variation, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna try something here because everything is new. Let's do a, uh, an iPhone share and then let's come here, let's go screen mirroring. Let's go to Zoom. Let's come here. Oh, can you see my screen? Are you yeah. guys? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got. All right, so when we're looking at this, let's just look at this right side here. So that right there is the piriformis muscle. And then, well, this is cool. All right, so what happens, let's just get rid of this again, muscles back here. So again, what's really happening is, uh, is let's get rid of this one, let's just hide that. So what's happening at, at maybe L4, 5 right here, this nerve root right here is getting irritated, and then that's gonna supply, that, that feeds in, that makes up the sciatic nerve right there. So then when that nerve root up here starts to get irritated, and that sciatic nerve is irritated. And when that sciatic nerve gets irritated right there, then piriformis muscle right there says, oh, I'll help. And when, they, when it, quote, helps, then it actually creates more tension on that nerve, and that creates more irritation on that nerve. And then that goes all the way down the leg. So that's how that really happens. And that's why we're stretching that out because that, that nerve is going to go all the way down the leg there. That is so cool to see. Love it. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Yeah. All right. So where were we? Piriformis stretch. That's why the piriformis stretch works so well. And then if you remember bicycles, before we had hydraulic brakes, the cable would sit in this housing and then the cable would like slide and glide through the housing. And if you didn't clean it out, it would get gunked up and it would get kind of stuck and it wouldn't work very well. That's how your nerves work. And so in order for nerves to be happy, they need 
space to live. So when we're, we're kind of taking the pressure off the disc and the joints, so we're giving that nerve space to live. The nerve needs blood flow. So you guys should be rowing and, and rowing should be one of the best things for it because it's gonna work 84% of the muscles in the body. So rowing should be good. Maybe the in, rowing at an intensity that's too high may irritate it, but blood flow is gonna be good for the nerves. And then the third thing is the nerve needs movement. So if you're in a situation to where you're having some of that um, flare up, one of the things that we'll have folks do, and they're, if you're having that hip pain and that's referring down the leg, one of the things we'll have folks do is just hold behind their knee and they're just gonna kick their leg up until, oh, yep, I feel my stretch. Get to that stretch point, back off just a touch. Now it's not stretching. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lower my legs so you can see. So I'm at my stretch point, back off just a touch, and then I'm going to flex that foot back and forth. And that's going to, when you're flexing your foot back and forth, you may feel that going down. So right here, I'm, I'm up at my stretch point, back off, I'm flexing that foot back and forth. I feel a little bit of that going down. And that's not your hamstring, that is your nerve that you're flossing back and forth. And that's going to... If you do that just kind of to an edge where it's not going to irritate it, again, it shouldn't be painful. I describe how far you should go to camping. You know, you want to get close to the fire. You want to feel the warmth. You don't want to go into the fire. You don't want to burn yourself. You want to feel maybe a little bit of that discomfort, but you don't want to create pain with that nerve glide. So I would just do 10 ankle pumps and then I would do 10 leg pumps. So Kick it up, back off, 10 ankle pumps, then 10 leg pumps. And that would be one of the best ways to uh, decrease that muscle on the nerve and increase the nerve gliding to decrease that nerve irritation. So that's kind of like your nerve treatment breakout. So we've talked about some core stuff and, and core, I put core because we have hip hinges. We've talked about disc type treatments, joint irritations, and then nerve stuff. So that's pretty much the gist of what I wanted to cover today. So if you I come back up here, share, share. So as we do this, um, if you are having issues, don't ignore it because the longer uh, you've had it, the longer it takes to get relief. So again, now's a perfect time to kind of double down on your rehab and recovery so that when you are able to get back into the gym and you're able to get back into the row house community, you can stay there and you're not just going to be hindered because now your back hurts because you haven't done anything for, you know, six weeks, hopefully it's less than that. Um, so yeah, a lot of people at this point are just going, I have too much going on. They're just going to try and mask it with ibuprofen, Tylenol, etc. We don't want to just alter it, fix the root of the problem. So if you have any issues, please let us know. Um, and so the question for you is how have you handled it in the past and what are you currently doing? What is your strategy? Um, because at the end of the day, I'm right down the street. I don't necessarily know that you need to come see me for everything, but I would love for you to reach out to me, email, whatever. I just want to be a resource for everyone. So I'll be the captain. I can kind of point your boat in the right direction. You guys get to row it confidently knowing you're going in the right direction, but uh, I'm just going to be there for you and your support. So um, we are doing 50% um, off of our e-visit. So if you do want to look at what's going on for you specifically, we'll do 50% off of our e-visits. Um, and we also are in office, so you can do that. So, um, and then what we're doing right now, because everybody is now starting to work from home, we're just going to give away a 15-minute consult. So if you're now working from home and you now have a new desk set up, I, I will help you set that up for free. Um, 15 minutes, we can talk about anything that you want to in that 15 minute consult. Set that desk up, talk about best strategies to prevent neck pain. But yeah, working from home is going to create new stress and, and new irritation. So 
I don't want that to happen. I'd rather you be pain free and be able to get back into the gym as quickly as possible when you can and not have to deal with other issues because you're now working from home and having injuries. So I appreciate your guys' time. It's uh, Saturday and you probably have a million other things to do, but uh, I really appreciate your time and I hopefully you learned something. I will stick around and answer any kind of questions that you have, whether it be for you or your whiny husbands or you know, grandma in Idaho. I don't care. I'll, I'll answer any questions you have. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for um, joining me on Breathing Away Your Back Pain. This was awesome, Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. We really appreciate it. It's a uh, kind of new and... I welcome feedback, so I'll probably send a little, hey, how are you, uh, how'd you feel like it went? Did you get enough, out, did you get out anything out of this? What could we have done better? We will email, I have all of the exercises that we've done um, in video form, so we'll just email those over to you so you all have that. But, that would be great. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, any questions? No, I'm just I'm excited to do the exercises because my I have exactly what you've been talking about. I have the um, bulging disc um, L5 S1, and so it's just kind of a constant battle. And honestly, I've just been slacking on the exercises, the nerve flossing, and um, and all of that. So this was a good kind of reminder of how to just stay maintained and keep it all keep it all working well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone should know and, and keep in mind that working out is stress. Not sleeping is stress. Eating food out of a box is stress. And going through a pandemic and working from home and not knowing what's going to happen is stress. And we're all going through this stress and we need to account for that. So now's not the time to go gung-ho and try and PR everything. Now's the time to kind of scale back a little bit, not increase your volume on anything. You are already stressed. Your nervous system is already taking on this new stress. So personally, I, I, my back flared up. Uh, I'm not sleeping because we have a one week old. Pandemic, I don't know what's gonna happen with our business, et cetera. My back flared up the other day and it's a disc issue. The first thing I did, I did a bunch of repeated extensions and immediately day I felt significantly better it's just a matter of managing stress management yeah that's awesome yeah because I I did the same thing I went for a run I haven't ran for a really long time and thinking it would be super helpful and it helped my stress level but my back was so pissed yeah yep. yeah I'm right there with you guys I've been feeling the exact same thing right-sided low back pain that's only flared up within the last two weeks since this all started and um just like chris said i've been trying to take a take the, the workout intensity a little bit of a notch down um and just account for that so anybody else any other questions comments Uh, thank you for sending the exercises and the email. That would be so awesome. Um, just as a reminder and just to have on hand. So really appreciate that. Perfect. Well, I guess enjoy the snow today. It's a beautiful, uh, sunny day out there once the snow melts. Uh, maybe we can get out for a run or something later. Or Definitely. 3,000 steps in or 10. Keep moving. Movement is for sure. Thank you so much, Chris. Enjoy your day as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Absolutely. See you guys.